Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings, and it's been a while since we've done an update here on the Butterfly House. And um, there's a couple reasons why, so I'm going to talk about the why before I do the showing you of what's going on currently. So at the end of July, we had a ton of caterpillars in here, and they pretty much defoliated all the Escalapius, and so um, there was no more food really for them. But it kind of ended at a great time because they were all big and plump, and once they ran out of food, they were about at the point where they were going to go off and do their chrysalis. So the timing there, end of July, or beginning of July, was good. What else was happening at that time, and we've kind of been watching it all spring, is we've had these tiny little white moths in here, and they have just been everywhere. The problem is, number one, they're eating all the plants, not really the Escalapius or milkweed, but everything else. So making all of the plants just look really ugly. The other thing is, is they were everywhere. So you just like touch a plant and it'd just be a big floof of all these white little moths. We knew we had to do something about it. The problem is these moths also come from little worms or little caterpillars. So what we've been using in the butterfly house this year is a lot of biologicals or good bugs that will eat the bad bugs. It's been working great on spider mite and thrip. Um, so that was working really well. The only problem is, is we couldn't find a bug, a good bug, that would eat those uh, moth caterpillar worms and not eat the milkweed, um, or not eat the um, monarch worms. So we had to kind of question, what do we do? It was looking like a train wreck in here. The plants were looking terrible. So what do we do? Well, as we were watching the population of the monarch caterpillars get big and plump, the Escalapius was pretty much gone and they were all off doing their chrysalis thing, we knew it was time that we had to take action. So the beginning of July, we came through here and trimmed back nearly every plant to the ground. When we trimmed all those plants back, our thought was by getting rid of all the foliage of the plants, is that we'll also get rid of that moth worm and any moth eggs that might be on any of the plants. So that was one way of helping to kind of combat and get rid of some of those moths. The second thing is, is when we went through and trimmed back all the foliage on all these plants, is we meticulously went through every single plant and stem and leaf that was thrown away to look for the monarch chrysalises. So in doing so, we came up with about 800 monarch chrysalises that we had to rehome. So we'll talk about the rehoming here in just a minute. So all of the foliage that you're seeing now currently is all new growth, clean growth, without any of the moth eggs or moth, moth caterpillars, worms on it. There is still some moth in here, but definitely not what there was. So we're feeling comfortable now that we can start reintroducing the monarch butterflies and caterpillars back into this house. In the meantime, we took all of those chrysalis, and I'm going to show you in just a minute, we took them to another greenhouse and just created a little um, butterfly house out and back in one of our old um, coal frames. So right now, we've brought in about 75 monarch um, butterflies into the house, and they're very happy fluttering around. Um, in doing so, though, having all of these butterflies in that secondary uh, butterfly house, we've been able to kind of select males and females. So our intention is, is, as we're bringing the monarchs back into this greenhouse, is we're going to be trying to bring in a lot of males, because obviously they're not the ones laying the eggs, and then bring in some females, because we want to have, you know, more caterpillars and such and eggs on the plants, but we want to try to control the population so that the next cycle, hopefully if we're controlling it good, we're not going to just defoliate all of the Escalapius or milkweed. So let's take a look here a minute at some of the plants that are just doing fabulous. Uh, to do a monarch butterfly house, you have to have milkweed or Escalapius. And this plant here, this is a tropical plant, and it was sticks, like literally sticks, um, once the caterpillars had eaten it clean. And it's grown back, and it's super lush and full, and it's, it's doing fabulous. Uh, over here is another same, it's the same plant, and if we look closely, we've also brought in a few caterpillars to kind of introduce the caterpillars along with the butterflies. So we brought in some caterpillars in here as well, that's a monarch caterpillar, so that they too can um, 
kind of start that cycle of life so that not everything is like chrysalising and uh, hatching all at the same time. Here's another one. This is on the milkmaid Escalapius. So they're doing really well. Plants that are blooming in here right now, we need the pollinator plants for the, the butterflies. In the corner there, we have some of the butterfly bush. Those are the Miss series. So we have Miss Molly, which is the beautiful pink. There's also a purple one. It was trimmed back, so it's not flowering yet, but there's Miss Violet and Miss Pearl also in that area. And I'm seeing some of the monarchs are enjoying the, the flowers right now. So it's really fun to watch. As we walk along, we did trim all of the annuals back to the ground as well because those two were host plants for those moths. So the annuals are starting to reflush out. Um, this one's not flowering yet. This is a salvia. So we'll just wait on that. We've got the verbena meteor showers, which is doing great. Uh, the Asclepius over here, this is starting to put a little bit of flower on. So that will be good for the pollinators. Walking through the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry. This is doing phenomenal. This we did not trim back because we did not notice any um, caterpillar or moth on this. Uh, but this is just doing absolutely fabulous in this greenhouse. Another butterfly bush, Miss Molly. The Lobularia Snow Princess is blooming and lining the sidewalks really nicely. Looks like we need to get a little bit of water in here. Um, Potpourri Funhouse Petunia. Latte Petunia, Supertunia Latte. Supertunia Midnight. Another Latte and Midnight. Uh, here's another great big Asclepius. This one was, again, just all sticks the end of um, June, beginning of July. And it's now it's grown back and is absolutely fabulous. The Pugster Butterfly Bush here has got lots of flowers on it. Uh, we could go through and deadhead some of those brown ones off if we want, um, but just really a nice, beautiful bloom. And then underneath here is, um, I believe this is the Bordeaux Supertunia. So that's also doing really nice. On this side, we've got a few more of the Asclepius that have come back. And actually, here's one I want to show you. This is what all the Asclepius looked like the end of June, beginning of July. It was just a stick, just like you're seeing here. Now this one obviously hasn't come back very well. I mean, a few little leaves on there, uh, but this one here looked the same and it's now, now just really nice and full. So it's, it's doing really great. Um, I found a place that the butterflies are loving to hang out. So let's go walk over and check out where they're hanging out. So this is the area where they're all liking to hang out. This here is another species of Escalapius. This one is actually the Escalapius hairy balls. It gets really cool flowers on it. Um, although I don't know that we're gonna see the flowers this year because it was also stripped of all of its foliage and it's just starting to come, uh, come back. You can see this plant is about six foot tall, so it's quite a big one. But all the butterflies are hanging out on the edge. All tucked in here, there's a few more. Like it's just a ton of them all tucked in here. So it's really fun to see the activity back in this greenhouse again with just all these beautiful fluttering butterflies. So if you're in the area, you can stop on in. We're open um, right now, it is summertime. So for the rest of the month of July and August, we're open Monday through Friday from nine until four and Saturdays from nine until three. So you can stop in and check out the butterflies. Um, but next I wanna take you over to the temporary butterfly house and just show you kind of what we did um, when we were rehabbing this butterfly house. So when we did the cleanup there at the beginning of July and brought all the chrysalises out of the actual butterfly house, we brought them into this greenhouse and created essentially another um, butterfly habitat for them. What we did with all the chrysalises, we grabbed some shipping carts and these are all the remnants of the chrysalises. Uh, we just glued the chrysalises to the top of these shipping carts and let them hang here to dry until they were ready to emerge. There was about 800 chrysalises and I would say probably 790 of them actually emerged. We were kind of wondering, some were bigger and some were smaller, but didn't matter the size, they all emerged. 
So essentially we had at one point about 800 um, monarchs in this greenhouse. Obviously we didn't need 800 in here, so we were letting them out into nature so they can go free, um, keeping you know, a handful, maybe 25, 30 or so of them um, to kind of help us recycle and repopulate um, for the actual butterfly house. So in doing so, we brought in a bunch of Escalapius milkweed plants and just scattered it throughout the greenhouse here. Also brought in a bunch of pollinator plants because we needed the pollinator plants as well. And you can see the, the caterpillars went through and made all of these potted plants here bear sticks as well. Um, there's a few caterpillars here. This one's really having a fun time. So you can see there's still some caterpillars eating. But we just continue to bring the Escalapius in so that there's plenty of food in here for them. Last weekend when I walked through the greenhouse, I counted about 200 chrysalis on the edge of the coal frame. So they were attached to either the, um, the mesh siding here or they were attached to some different um, areas within the metal structure. There's one there. Down there's another one. So they just, they kind of went anywhere and everywhere. So I counted about 200 of them. So this week when we got in here, Monday and Tuesday, they were starting to hatch. And so there were pretty much butterflies just everywhere. So right now, I don't even know how many butterflies are in this greenhouse right now, but what we're doing is we are going through, we're grabbing out males and a couple females that we can bring into the butterfly house to restock that so that when you come and visit, there'll be butterflies out there. Uh, the females in here, we're keeping some females in here, and then we're also opening the door, and we're gonna do this probably in the next couple days. We're gonna open the door and let these butterflies kind of just fly out and go to nature. So there's no sense of us keeping them all in here. We wanna let them go free and go to nature. So we're gonna keep the females maybe like 20, 25 of them so that we continue our cycle here um, of populating for the greenhouse um, butterfly house. Uh, but really, like I said, there's no need to keep them all. They might as well go in nature and help populate out in nature as well. So it's been really a fun experience watching the cycle um, not only out in the butterfly house and what's working and not working out there, but also having the opportunity to bring them in here and create another space where we can continue to cycle through and raise monarch caterpillars. So hopefully this has been interesting for you. Um, it's been an experience for us. It's been fun. It's been fun raising them. It's been fun watching them go free and enjoy everything that nature has to offer for them. Um, if you're interested in creating your own little butterfly oasis, the basic thing, especially if you want the monarch caterpillars, is to have the Escalapius or milkweed in your garden because that is the host plant for both the caterpillars and the eggs. And then the pollination, that can be done on really any pollinator plant. So if you want to have these beautiful little guys and gales in your garden, consider planting some milkweed. We hope you have time. You can come visit us here at Garden Crossings and enjoy our butterfly house. It'd be a treat to see you, and we hope to see you soon. This is Heidi from Garden Crossings.